guys welcome back to my light girl series if you're new welcome I'm Emma and my last video in this series I set some goals for February 2022 today I'll be reflecting on February and whether or not I achieved my goals and from this I'll be setting new goals and habits for March if like me you've never done any goal setting before and feel like you've just been living life on autopilot and want some direction this video as well as my others in this series could be helpful so what were my goals for February a set five, a set a goal of eating no more than 1,338 calories per day during January and I managed it more often than not but as I hadn't achieved this every day I migrated this goal to February. You'll see from my habit tracker that it's pretty much the same story again. I haven't achieved it 100%. So what next? Well I set this goal because I believed it would help me achieve my annual weight loss goal of £42. And after two months, I have lost three pounds, which is better than a gain or staying the same. So there's still a positive there, but it's just quite a bit less than I'd hoped to have lost at this point in the year. So my thinking is this, this goal wasn't realistic given the plans and events that I had during January and February. And although I achieved this goal most days, just one day off and on paper I failed, which isn't very motivating. Then after failing for one day, I've thought, well, I've failed for the month now anyway. What's another day of just eating as many calories as I like? So do you see what I mean? I'm thinking I need to set myself specific small weight loss goals and with end dates as well. So referring to me key, I'm going to mark this as cancelled. Another goal I'd set in January and then migrated to February because I'd only partially achieved it was to spend one-to-one -one time with my two best friends after not seeing them all over Christmas. I'd only partially achieved it because although I'd met up and spoken to one friend quite a lot, my other friend tested positive for COVID, she'd moved quite a journey away from where I live and she'd started a new job. So I hadn't and still haven't been able to meet up with her. We have spoken on the phone but Look again, on paper, I'm thinking I've failed, even though I've done everything possible to try and achieve it. It's been out of my control, and so it's made me realise that when you're setting personal goals, they need to be ones that you are in control of. Not based on other people's input, or in this case, their availability. So this needs rethinking and also cancelling. Another goal migrated from January, due to underestimating the amount of consideration and time required, was to set up a content calendar to allocate specific days for me to research, write, film, edit and upload videos to YouTube. I felt that I just needed to get into more of a routine. I'm not going to lie, I've still been winging it. I've just been using every spare minute to create this stuff for you guys and I'm loving it. But I do realise the importance of being consistent for you guys obviously but for me family at home as well. And so I've managed to sit down and put this content calendar together. So I can now mark this goal as complete. Also in February, I set a goal of researching different video editing software and finding a new one. I'd been using InShot, which I'd enjoyed using, but I could only use it on my mobile phone, which wasn't giving me as many options and features. I meant that editing took quite a bit longer than it needed to. A lot longer than it would take on software designed for a computer. I wasn't getting much use out of my laptop, which I bought because it's ideal for video editing. So I watched some YouTube videos and read some reviews online. And after weighing up the pros and cons and bearing in mind my own limited experience of using editing software, as well as not wanting to pay out for software, I managed to find PowerDirector. I've continued to use InShot on my mobile phone, but in the meantime, I've been familiarising myself with PowerDirector and I've been practising new things. So I'll be using it to edit my next video. So yeah, I'm ready to work with it and we'll see how it goes. So this goal is complete. I set a goal of reading or listening to two books during February. I've never been a reader, like up until two years ago, excluding school books, I've never read a book on my own. And when I say read, I've read a few, but I actually listen to books using Audible now. 
this works better for me than actually reading because I can still listen whilst I'm driving or cleaning or walking the dog. I set this goal because I went from listening to four books a month to listening to less than one. Naturally because I've been spending a lot of time making YouTube videos for you guys but I've learned a lot from books. They've helped me to overcome some difficult times, make some tough decisions, awaken more to who I truly am, what my values and beliefs are and what I want to get out of this life. Books inspired me to start this channel. So I wanted more of the knowledge, wisdom, different perspectives and inspiration that they offer. During February, I found this in a book called The Way of Integrity by Martha Beck. This book gives a four stage process as well as some exercises that anyone can use to find integrity. And with it, a sense of purpose, emotional healing and life free of mental suffering. I loved this book. It demonstrates love, care, vulnerability and passion to make a difference in the world. It was also interesting and informative. As someone on a journey to awakening who I am and what I truly want from this life, this book spoke to me and it kept me engaged from start to finish. I think anyone in a similar position to me who wants to live a more intentional, fulfilling and compassionate life should read this book. I listened to another book called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert T. Kiyosaki. This book shares how a context shifts and the way that we view money and investments allows us to see opportunities that others miss. If like me you're looking for ways that can help you to retire early and financially free and you don't want to work doing a job that you don't love your entire life, I recommend this book. So again this goal was achieved. So here's my monthly reflection page or check-in and this is where I review and reflect on the past month's accomplishments, summarise how I did with my goals and where I'm at with them by answering 12 questions. I'll put these in the description box for you. I do talk more about the benefits of reflecting in my last video. Each monthly reflection gives you a chance to start over, reevaluate, and make a new plan before you set your next monthly goals and decide on which habits you'd like to track. I'll use my journal logs and weekly reflections and pictures, as well as my memory, which isn't really that great to be honest, to help me. And I answer each question with a journal prompt. What went well this month? What did I accomplish? And how does it make me feel? Both girls had lovely birthdays. I organised parties and meals for them both, as well as presents. I didn't get into debt or dip into any savings and I feel proud of myself. What didn't go so well and how can I improve for next month? I ate out a lot. I overspent on food and ate more calories than I should have. So to improve next month, I could plan healthier options. What lessons did I learn this month and how did I grow as a person? I learned that goals need to be ones that we can personally control and that I feel disheartened and like I failed when I don't achieve them, even if I know I've done all that I can. I need to focus on what I can control. What challenges did I face this month and how did I deal with them? I had high expenses to cover birthdays for the girls and my family and I dealt with it with weekly evaluations and adjusting budgets or behaviours. What am I spending too little or too much time on? I'm spending too little time on my own and it's meaning that I'm getting easily annoyed and frustrated quite often. What didn't go as planned and how can I improve on it? Well, little change in my weight. So to improve, I can set specific weight loss goals and increase my activity. Did you reach your goals this month? Why or why not? I did manage to reach three. Two were cancelled and partial completion, but need rethinking or rewording. And one wasn't in my control, and one wasn't specific enough. What habits did I focus on this month, and how did I do? I focused on two habits. The first was counting calories, and I didn't manage to do this every day. And the second was putting laundry away. I did manage to re-establish this as a good daily habit, and I'm feeling the benefits. Which habits should I continue working on next month and why? I should track my calories because this will eventually support my annual health goal. Are there any bad habits I want to work on next month? Yes, leaving emails and messages unopened at the end of each day. What new habits do I want to try and implement next month and why? 
I'd like to clear my inbox daily to reduce digital clutter and be more organised. And I'd like to call friends regularly because I can control this and it's realistic. Overall, am I satisfied with how the month went? Why or why not? Yes, because I achieved some of my goals during quite a busy time. With February's reflection done, I can use the answers to my questions to help me decide on goals for March. My first goal is to clear my shed. I did originally set this goal in January, but because it involved me selling items at a car boot sale and me realising that the car boot sales aren't on until around March, I decided to migrate this goal to March. I have sold some items on Gumtree, Vinted and eBay, but it does take a lot of time to list them, answer lots of questions and then post all the items out. So yeah, I'm going to plan some time to sort through everything, which is basically just items I've decluttered from my home or my mum's decluttered from hers. I'll fill my car one dry sunny day, get down to the car boot sale and people can just view, ask questions, pay for and take away the items there and then. So although yes, I will get slightly less money per item than I would if I'd sold them online, I can realistically find time for a car boot sale. My next goal is to lose six pounds in March. I need to set specific small weight loss goals to aim for. This way, I still need to focus on my calorie intake, which I can continue to track, but it will also encourage healthier food options and increased activity. I'd worked out when I set my annual weight loss goals that I could realistically lose about one and a half pounds a week. My current weight is 12 stone one, so I'm looking to weigh no more than 11 stone nine by the 1st of April. I'll continue to weigh myself weekly to monitor my progress and give myself the opportunity to make any adjustments that I need to make to my lifestyle, such as plan some additional exercise, for example. My third goal is to have Lydia's prom arrangements made and a budget and savings plan in place. Lydia's school leave is prom is at the end of June. I have started to save for it because I do know that it's going to be quite costly, not just for the dress, but for all the accessories, hair and makeup and drinks on the night. But I don't know exactly how much each individual item is going to cost. So I don't have a budget or savings plan in place to make sure I can afford it. So I want to have these things by the end of March. I'll need to plan to visit some dress shops and make some phone calls. My fourth goal is to spend half a day alone. Okay, so don't take this one the wrong way. I do love my kids and boyfriend to bits, but I am now aware of the signs that I need some alone time. Like feeling short tempered, getting easily irritated by minor things. I'm feeling overwhelmed. And yes, I have felt these things lately. The last time I was actually alone for more than a couple of hours was just over a year ago when I was furloughed from work for six weeks due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I had some quality time at home with the girls. And when they went to the dads, I had nowhere to go, nothing to do and no one to please. I had time to explore things that interested me such as minimalism and I discovered a slow and more intentional living as a new way of life. I'd go on long walks or bike rides, I'd read and listen to books, I started to watch YouTube videos for the first time and I was able to explore these things without the guilt of feeling I should be doing more or should be doing something for others and also without the pressures and judgments from others. I was in my own little bubble really, with time to just focus on myself. I asked questions like, how did I get here? Where do I want to be? And what do I need to do to get there? Answering these questions helped me to discover my true values, allowed me thoughts to wander from the thoughts of home, work, life and everyday routine. And I found my creative side. I began to think about starting my own YouTube channel after being inspired by other YouTubers. I'd honestly never watched YouTube until I was furloughed. I promised myself that when life returned to normal and I was back at work, I'd schedule more alone time to tap into my own thoughts, feelings and experiences. But of course, it's not that easy when you have two kids, a home to look after and you work at least 45 hours a week. Yes, I found pockets of time to work on this channel and I am loving it. But honestly, I feel like I just need a nice long walk outside or a bike ride. So I'm going to book some annual leave this month. And one day whilst the kids are at school, I'm going to do one of these simple things. Just for me, just alone. I just know it'll help me feel renewed 
and free from your feelings of irritation and overwhelm. And it'll also feed into my annual health and well-being goals. I used to think that it'd be really selfish for me to spend time off work alone. Like, I could only spend time off work when the kids were off school, so we didn't need to go to holiday club or spend time being looked after by family. But I now realise that time alone is essential for my own emotional and physical wellness. And really, me being well is essential to me kids. So yeah, in March, I'm having half a day for myself. And my last goal for March is to organise my email inboxes. For many people, myself included, checking email is an important part of a daily work routine. However, with lots of unsolicited sales messages and subscription offers, bank reminders and spam, our personal inbox can just get out of control and really quickly, making it difficult to sift through the important stuff. A few months back, I deleted all the emails that I didn't need, sorted out the ones that I did need into folders. I unsubscribed from messages, companies and offers that just didn't interest me. And then I made it my daily habit to keep on top of this digital clutter. I felt so relieved and accomplished each day, but recently I've just been focused on other things. I fell out of the habit and now my inbox is inundated again. I feel overwhelmed by this in the same way that I would with too much physical clutter. Like if my house was just full of too much stuff that I didn't need or use. So I'm going to set aside a couple of hours to have a digital declutter this month. So here I have five goals for March. Of the two habits I was tracking in February of calorie counting and putting laundry away each night, I'm just going to continue to track my intake of calories. And additionally, I'm going to track some other things. How many times I exercise for 30 minutes or more to achieve my weight loss target. So how often do I really get my heart pumping? Probably less than I think. How often I find time to phone a friend. I haven't seen one of them as you know and I've been feeling bad about not achieving this goal. But as I said, this isn't something I can control. How many times I pick up the phone and at least try to talk to people is in my control. Seeing the amount of times I make the effort will make me feel less bad when plans to meet up don't work out. I want to track the habit of clearing my email inbox. I've already explained how having an organised mailbox makes me feel and so tracking how often I clear it will hopefully act as a reminder to do it and leave my inbox clutter free. So here I have four habits to track during March. Habits and goals are connected like two sides of a coin. Good goals provide a sense of direction and effective habits provide the discipline to achieve those goals, which is why I now set both each month. What goals are you setting or habits are you going to track during March and why? Let me know in the comments because you might just inspire others to do the same. Here's to making our goals a reality and integrating good habits into our daily routines during March. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know by giving me a like or by sharing your thoughts in the comments. Hit the bell and subscribe button for more content like this and on planning and intentional living. Thanks for watching guys. Bye for now.